is a quick uh, curling IO tutorial video on setting up your competitions um, for a provincial association and then assembling your teams. So the competition we're going to work on in this demo is the Open World Demo Cup. So I'm just going to click edit next to it to cover a few of the details that you want to keep in mind when you're doing setup. So down here in the registration section requires curler profile. We definitely don't want to have this checked unless you are intending to do an individual registration for the competition, meaning that everyone on the team registers and pays separately. As that's not the case for most membership associations, you want to make sure this is unchecked, which turns this into a team registration rather than an individual team registration. You want to set your team restriction appropriately um, you want to either ask for team name or skip name. If you don't ask for either of these, then IO is not going to be able to make team recommendations to try and auto-assemble your teams for you, which is going to mean a lot more work on your end. So I would make sure that either team name or skip name is required. Either one is fine. In this case, we're doing team name. For lineups, um, many of you will do names and emails are required. Names are required works as well, and that's what I'm doing here. But you definitely want to ask for lineups when it's a team registration. Otherwise, again, we won't be able to auto-assemble the teams for you, um, make recommendations for your teams. You'll end up doing it all manually. Publish registrations, this is optional. Um, all this does is just puts a registrations tab on the competition on the public side. And then if you're the public clicks on that tag, if uh, that tab, if, if members click on that tab, then they'll see who's already registered. And the information that they'll see is really just the the um, team name and, and potentially the lineup that's been submitted. But you can leave this off if you don't want that to show up. Publish schedule and results, you probably all want to have this checked. This just allows you to assemble teams, and then gives you access to the legacy side for scoring. Allow spares. I think typically you won't have this checked. Um, this just this enables our sparing engine, which just allows curlers to kind of go in and, and check off which competitions they're willing to spare for. Probably not something you want to do at a provincial level. Um, but even if you did, it doesn't really affect anything. It just might confuse any curlers that actually find that feature on the front end. For add-ons and fees, this is where you would add your competitor fees if you have any. Um, I wouldn't require curler profiles for your competitor fees because then the person registering will have to assign a curler profile to each one of them of your fees when they actually register, which means we're most likely going to get a lot of duplicates in the system because chances are those curlers have already created profiles for themselves and the person registering them may or may not have access. They might not see those existing profiles, so they'll end up creating duplicates. So typically you would add your competitor fees as add-ons without requiring curler profile, or you would just not have them as add-ons and have them as a straight up product, as a standalone product, which you can then send out the URL for that and tell or, or put something in your website and say that all of the uh, Every, all the participants in a competition must go and uh, purchase this um, competitor fee or competitor card before they're able to participate in the event. So there's options there, there's lots of flexibility, so whatever you think works for you. But you can have it as an add-on without requiring curler profiles and it, at a minimum collect the fees. The only problem there is you don't really have anything that ties those fees to a specific curler profile, so it might require looking at the reports in Excel or whatever on your end. Uh, custom fields, if you want to ask for anything other than just the team skip in lineup, um, then you can create custom fields for that and assign that to the competition. So that pretty much covers the, um, the customization. So what we want to take a look at now is now that it's the competition has, registration has been open and we've accepted a bunch of registrations, we can click into the competition here and we're going to see a registrations tab, a curlers tab, a teams tab, and then our legacy where we're going over to manage the scores until we get all this ported over to V2. So here on the registrations tab, 
you will see all the registrations that have been submitted. This is the user. Um, this will probably be an email address a lot of the time, depending if we get their name from Gmail or not, if they use the Gmail login, and not a curler. Okay. Um, the details here, this is their, their team lineup, um, as well as their team name or skip name, if that's what you asked for. And uh, there could be mistakes in here. Um, so if there are then you know mistakes in here, then the system won't be able to match up the lineup to actual curlers when curlers go and join the competition. But you can edit these to correct those. So if someone mistyped a name in the lineup, you can edit it and make those changes, which we'll show you in a minute how that works. On the curlers tab, you're going to see everyone who's joined the competition or that you've manually added to the competition. Um, so when they do a self join, when they go to this, so when they register, um, is after submitting their payment, whether it was online or offline, um, they're going to get a war uh, a notice at the top, um, an alert um, that's pretty visually um, impactful that will tell them that they need to to join the competition and have all their teammates join the competition and provides them with this URL. They'll also receive an email. And in that email, after registering, it will have this link as well, and it'll ask them to send it out to their teammates. So this is probably the most important thing that can really reduce the amount of work involved um, for the membership associations is to make sure that your curlers are actually going, that all the participants on a team are actually going here. And by clicking this, not only would they um, accept a waiver if, if you're requiring waivers for your competition, but they would automatically get associated to this specific competition rather than just being in the system and you having to search for them. Um, so it'll kind of, it's a little more automated than it was previously. But you're going to have curlers who don't um, potentially, so you can also send out this URL as a reminder um, and you can also manually add curlers. Um, so if, for, if someone wasn't able to figure this out or they just didn't get around to it, um, then you could optionally add curlers. Um, so if I go to this add curlers, um, I can have a, I can filter my list of all the available curlers at my organization by those that match names in the lineups that were submitted in the registrations. And this will try to automatically kind of filter that list because you'll have thousands in it um, to only show the curlers that actually match those names. Um, so this would be the first way I would I would search to manually add curlers and then if you can't find anyone you can uncheck this and you can search by curler name and stuff here and then add them to the event. The next thing you want to do here so once all these curlers have been have been self-registered or even before they have been you can come over to the teams tab. Um, now you can create teams manually so you may want to create if you know what teams are going to be in the event you might want to create them all ahead of time so that you can start setting up your round robins and playoff brackets and stuff over in legacy um, but eventually once the registrations come in the system can make team recommendations for you and so if we click on this team recommendations tab we will see all of the teams that the system um, believes we have based on the registrations that have come in, so on the teams that have been registered, and the curlers that have self-joined or that you've manually added will show up within those teams. And this will update over time, um, so if anything's missing, um, like if someone registers later on, um, the team recommendations will see that that new registration has come in and it will ask you if you want to update that team with that new registration if it was able to assign it. So if I go ahead and create these teams, I'll kind of show you how that works. Now once all these teams have been created, I don't have any more team recommendations. And back here on this screen, I can see all of my teams. Um, now I did notice one that Dibbert here um, is missing their third. So they're missing one of their positions, their vice. And so I can actually come in here, right? And then I can add someone, and it happens to be Christopher, um, and I can put them in the third position if I wanted to. Um, or another way to do this is I can figure out why this didn't automatically get associated. So if I look at my curlers here, I see that Christopher is here and registered for the event. He did self-register. But if I go to the registrations and I look at Dibbert, it actually says Chris instead of Christopher. So this is an example of 
of where there's a disconnect between what the system can recommend and what might have been entered. Uh, but I can, there's a couple ways I can fix this. Like I said, I could just manually assign Christopher to the as the third position to this team that has been assembled. Um, another thing I can do is I can click on edit for this registration and I can fix this registration to use his full name so that the recommendation engine will find them. So now if we go over to our teams and we click on team recommendations, you'll see that team Dibbert here, it's not creating a new team this time, but it sees there is an update to this team. So it's got a match which doesn't already exist on the team. Um, so this will work even if you created like Dibbert as an empty team and then the registrations came in later. Then every time a registration co comes in, then you would see that there would be an update on the team recommendations. Um, so I can update this team, which will assign Christopher Rutherford. And um, then in my teams, um, we'll see there's Dibbert and it has Christopher there as the third. And then once all my teams are set up, um, then I can jump over to Legacy and um, do my my round robins brackets um, and scoring. So that concludes this video.